Hi, I'm Joe James, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the beautiful soup library, BS4, to scrape data off the web. Within the next 10 minutes, you're going to learn how to scrape data off of 50 different long HTML pages, consolidate it into a single Python data structure, and write it to a CSV file. The content we're going to look at is US climate data, and that has temperature and climate data for all states and also all the major cities within the United States. So here's what the Alabama page looks like. This is one state, and you can see there are different links to each city in the state of Alabama. We also have a table of data for the state, and it's broken down by month. Now if we go up one, we can see the United States. And on the United States page, it gives us the average high, average low, and precipitation data, and so on, by month for the whole country. But it also has links to each state. So what we're going to do is grab off of this page the links to each state, and then we're going to get the average high temperature by month for each state. And that's what we're going to save. Obviously, you could do another level, and you could get all the city data as well if you wanted. But we're not going to do that today. So you should start by installing the Beautiful Soup library. And you can use pip install Beautiful Soup 4 or pip install BS4. And you can also use easy install if you want. After you get the beautiful soup library installed, you'll see all the documentation here at this link. It gives you a complete list of all the functions and everything included in BS4. I'm only going to cover a subset of those in this video, but enough to get you started. So the first thing we need to do is grab all that HTML data from that web page. And we're going to use the requests library to do that. So first we're going to import requests, and then we'll say R, which is our request, it equals request.get. This is a get request to get a web page. We pass in our URL. And then we can see the length of the text that we got is 28,000 characters of HTML. That's how long our HTML document is. Beautiful soup now is going to help us parse what we want out of that text. And we're going to do that for 50 different pages. So it's a really powerful tool. Now we're going to import beautiful soup. From BS4, import beautiful soup. And then we're going to convert our text, our HTML text, into a beautiful soup object. We pass the text in as a parameter, and we get back a soup object that we'll just call soup. Now we can get specific tags or IDs out of that HTML document really easily. By saying soup.title, we get the title of the document. And here you can see the title is printed out with its tags. If we do soup.title.string, we just get the text string that is contained within the title tags. Now we can drill into the page contents a little more. We can get paragraph tags using .p, or we can do um, a, which is an anchor tag, by using .a. So any name of the tag, you can just use dot and then the name of that tag. And it'll give you everything, including the tag itself. If you just want to get the text that's included between the tags, you can use .text or .string. And then if you want to get an attribute within a tag, like for instance, here P has an attribute called class. Our A tag has an uh, attribute called href, which is the link, and so on. So if you want to get, a, let's say, the title tag, you can put that within the square brackets and a parentheses. This will give us the title attribute within an A tag. And when we put that dot .p and dot .a, we're just going to get the very first incidence in this document. I'll show you in a second how you can get all of the incidents in a document, and you can put those into a list. And then, as you know, HTML is basically hierarchically structured, so it's like a tree. If you want to get the parent of an object, soup.p.parent will give us the parent tag of p. And if you want to improve the print formatting, you can use prettify. This is a built-in function in Beautiful Soup. It only works on beautiful soup objects. It'll fix the line returns and indention for a block of code. So what we need to get from that page is all of the links to the state pages. We want to be able to get all the data for each state. So what we're going to do is for link in soup.findAll A. In other words, find all A tags, which is anchors, and then print link.get href. And what this is going to give us is the href link, or the, um, the URL of the uh, link, from the anchor tag. And we can print out every single one on the page, all the links on the page. And you can see some of them are we don't want. Some of these are just hashtags. 
Some of them are links to other sites, and we don't want those. What we want is all these state links. So this is what we want to get. Maybe the easiest way to filter this out is just using some string functions. We can see that they all start with the slash climate. So what we'll use is a string filter to filter out the ones that we want. We'll start with a base URL, which is this. And then we can see that these are relative URLs up here, right, which are tacked onto the base URL. So I'll hard code in the base URL for each one of those links. And then we'll create an empty list of state links. And then for each link in the soup.findall a for the anchor tags, we're going to get the URL. URL equals link.gethref. We'll do a quick check here. If the URL exists, i.e. it's not a null object, and it, it contains the climate substring, and we also want to block out climateunitedstates.us because that's not that's the whole country. It's not in the URL. Then we'll append it to our list. And at the very end, we can see that we got 51 links, which is all the 50 states plus Washington, D.C. So now I've used a simple string check, the if statement, a series of ifs, to weed out the URLs that we don't want from this page. Now that we've got all of those links to the states added to a state links list, our next task is to figure out how to get the data for one state. So let's try this. We'll do a new request, and we'll just grab state number five. I don't know which one that is. And then we'll convert it to a beautiful soup object using the same process we used above. And then we can uh, print out the title of that. And we can see that, yeah, look, this is Ohio. So state number five in our list of state links is Ohio. So let's get the Ohio data. The data we need is in table row tags. How do I know that? Let's jump back to the web page. Here's what we're looking for, the average high temperature. Now when we right click on that and we pick inspect, we can see our inspector over here on the right. This is our browser tool, has an inspector. This is a table row that has all the data we need. So that's one table row right there that has the average highs for January through June. But there's another one that has the average highs for July through December. So we need to get those two rows of data. So we want to get this table row, and it's going to include this huge block of HTML, and then we can grab out these values is what we really want. We're going to start by getting all the table rows. Wow, look, there's 58 table rows in this document, but we only want two of them. We want the two that have the average high temperature. So we need to filter through those rows of TR tags to figure out which ones have the average high in them. Guess what? It's a pretty easy task if we use a list comprehension. So what we're going to do is, for each row in rows, we're going to first convert that row to a string format instead of a BS4 object. And then we're going to check if the substring average high is in it. If so, we're going to add it to the new list called rows. And this is called a list comprehension. And what we get when we finish that is two rows of data. Now we're going to create a new list called high temps. And we're going to add those two rows of data we're going to add each of the 12 values, the 12 months, to that high temps list. So we're going to iterate through the two rows. We need to get all the table data cells. So we do a row.findall td. Now we need to parse out the contents of that data cell. Because if you look at a data cell, it has all this in it. And all we really want is that number. So we need to parse that number out of it. So the way we parse that number out is, for each of the six months of data cells, one through seven, we get the text of that data cell. And when we print out high temps, you see we get 12 months of data. Next, we need to get the name of the state. We're going to use that as the key for a dictionary to add all this data to. So it seems like up above here, the state was the number one word, or this is climate is zero, Ohio is one. So if we get word number one from that sentence, the title string, we can use that as a state. So that's what I did here. But the problem with that is that two word states like New York, North Carolina, North and South Dakota don't work that way. So what we need to do is find the first space and then find the hyphen and get everything in between those two. And then we add the dot strip to just strip off any blank spaces at the beginning and end of it. And that's a more robust way of grabbing the state. So okay, now we can get the state and now we got the data and we can just add that to a dictionary. So here is what our scraped data looks like now. 
we'll create a new data dictionary and then we set the data of that state equal to the high temps list and then this is what our dictionary looks like that's one entry in the dictionary so the next step is to put everything that we just did together into a single for loop so we can iterate through all 51 states get all the temperature data get the name of the state add it to our dictionary and then we'll have 51 entries in a dictionary with the state name and the data so putting it all together is basically just using the code that we wrote up above into a single for loop. So we're going to iterate through the state links. We're going to construct our URL using the base URL and that state link. We use a request to grab the HTML page for that link. We convert it to a beautiful soup object. And then we get the rows, the table rows. We need to filter those table rows to get the two that have the average high data in them. There are only two rows left. We create an empty list for high temps. We iterate through those rows and we add all these table data cells where we get the text of the data cells and we add that to our list of temperatures. Now we have the 12 temperature values added to our high temps list. Here we get the title string that has the state's name in it and we parse out the name of the state from that string. And then we set our dictionary value. We use the state as the key and the high temps list as the value. And you can see that when we're done parsing through all of those 50, yeah, we get a dictionary of all the 50 states with the key being the name and the value being a list of 12 monthly temperatures. So that's what we want. Perfect. Now we've, we've successfully parsed using Beautiful Soup and Request Library, we've parsed 51 web pages. So next we might want to save that data to a CSV file. We have all this in a dictionary. With a few lines of code, we can save it to a CSV. So we'll import the CSV library, and then we're going to open a new file in write mode as F. We create a new writer, CSV writer, from that file, and we just do a w.writerows, data.items, and that stores the key and the value. You may want to save it in a different format. There are a lot of different ways to write data to disk. That's the easiest, quickest way to do it. Now, if you want to put it in a JSON format or whatever, you're welcome to change this. So I hope you learned from this video some fundamentals of scraping data from the web. I welcome any comments below, and I hope you liked this video. If so, please click the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'm Joe James. Thanks for watching.